Hello and welcome to the Mutual Fund Show. I am Neeraj Shah and uh, we are going to be talking about a couple of key aspects around mutual funds. More so from a perspective of how you can analyze your existing funds. As usual, we will have queries and we will get our guests to answer those queries as well. But what we will be doing today, amongst other things, is discussing if flexi-cap funds um, have been consistent outperformers or underperformers relative to the benchmarks. And based on the outcome of this math, should you take a decision to either get out or stay in or increase the allocation to some of these funds? Remember, this can be done for any category. We've chosen flexi caps as opposed to either large caps or mid caps simply because uh, currently having that flexibility to move between large caps and mid caps in a market which is uh, looking so polarized on valuations, I think it is very important and hence flexi cap is the cornerstone of this conversation. Our guest today, Rushab Desai, founder of Rupee with Rushab Investment Services and Shittis Marjan, managing partner and CEO of Complete Circle. Gentlemen, both of you, thank you so much for taking the time out and being with us. Really appreciate your time. Um, let's start off with uh, how should one analyze the 10 year rolling returns or any other form of return for uh, flexi cap funds and what would the best way to do it? Rushab, you had sent me this message uh, first, so I'd love to start off with you. Would you look at rolling returns over the longer period as the best way to do this or is there some other way that you would do this? Neeraj, thanks so much for having me on the show. Uh, I think I completely agree with you that, you know, doing an exercise on a daily rolling basis over a longer period of time makes more sense. Because what we have observed is that on a short to medium term perspective, whether it is three years, five years, or the, even on a seven year point of view, uh, funds can underperform. And it's very natural, uh, you know, for funds to underperform in a short to medium term perspective. Uh, I have taken an additional point over here from a 10 year point of view, because 10 year gives a broad uh, a picture, you know, like a complete cycle, you know, of how the funds have done. Now, quite a lot of funds have done quite well, uh, you know, in terms of delivering outperformance uh, against Nifty 500 TRI index. You know, what a lot of investors do is chase returns. Actually, the whole purpose of investing in a product like FlexiCap, right, is to give consistency and to give little higher returns than, than Nifty 500 is something what I truly believe. You know, alpha, you know, we can discuss on, on how much outperformance uh, can a fund generate or alpha can a fund generate. But even if a fund is generating an outperformance or an alpha of say like anywhere between one to three percent, I think that's a decent uh, uh, outperformance from a long term perspective. You know, some top performing funds uh, which have had a hundred percent outperformance strike rate since uh, the inception has been Aditya Birla Flexi Cap Fund, Franklin India Flexi Cap Fund, Kotak Flexi Cap Fund, Parag Parik Flexi Cap Fund. These these have been the uh, the top performance where you know they have given hundred percent outperformance strike rate over a longer period of time, which is on a on a ten year rolling basis. Uh, you know I think an ideal outperformance strike rate should be you know seventy percent and above. Uh, but even if a fund doesn't do that great, for example, like a quant mutual fund, you know which has been uh, recently taken over, uh, you know, and rebranded itself and Sandeep has done a, a fabulous job. So it is important to look at from a long term perspective since the funds inception and also from, you know, a recent point of view as well, uh, you know, that gives a clear picture of how the fund has been doing recently. So, you know, even on the recent times, if a fund is generating or is, is consistently outperforming for a couple of years, I think that is a very good sign. Uh, uh, Okay, I think we're just uh, getting a slightly tougher feed there, but you got some sense of that. This is just the initial starter. So, Shitish, uh, good afternoon. And I would love to understand how you would uh, go about and measure uh, the attractiveness of a flexi cap fund, uh, a mix of, of course, performance, but uh, other parameters that people should, uh, should keep in mind. Please do keep in mind that not all of our viewers would have the access to the same kind of data sets that you would. Uh, well, good afternoon, Neeraj, and I totally agree that uh, sometime uh, at our level, we have access to a better reports, better data points. But let's say on a common man per se, somebody who's, who's an investor doing this himself or using some uh, partner through which they are investing, I think one, obviously, what Rishabh has mentioned about rolling returns, uh, uh, 
that is that is one parameter which is there having said that uh, uh, one is you analyze fund uh, the basis of what the performance or outperformance or the moving return or various matrix basis is there or let's say this is index what's the outperformance is there <clears throat> excuse me at the same time what becomes more important is that when you are analyzing a fund uh, the the reason you are analyzing is to look at a future view or take a future view on those funds that yes you are looking at funds to invest that's why you are analyzing funds it's so i think for a, for an investor when they are looking at yeah past performance and our performance on these parameters is important <clears throat> uh, but at the same time what is important is the number one point is longevity of a fund manager with a fund house or with a fund so in a fund what matters is that who is a fund manager and for how long he's been managing a fund second is investment philosophy whether it's in line with your philosophy or not third important parameter as rishabh mentioned rolling return is there for there are various metrics uh, which are uh, very much available on web across portfolios that how you want to analyze these funds like uh, <clears throat> sometimes it is evident that uh, for 2025 years there are few funds which have outperformed uh, which have given return of 19 20% compounding but yes short term performance is important uh, and short term and talk about 3 5 7 years also i'm not talking about one year or six months that is also very important because it gives you a perspective on how how uh, the funds have been doing in such a dynamic markets look uh, five year 10 years back markets have not been that uh, uh, volatile or dynamic which has become right now uh, cycles have shortened or various uh, you know uh, uh, investment arenas so things have become very very fast when we talk about in recent times and it becomes evident that uh, fund manager has to be a very dynamic fund manager to manage situation now so you have to look at a current scenario also at the same time uh, what in addition what we look at which uh, data points little which we have available on our side our valuation matrix which includes your price to earning price to book value price to sales price to volumes and many other expected earning growth in in future uh, 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 earnings also which help us to understand that whether what you are buying right now into a fund whether it is rightly placed in terms of valuation price uh, why all these metrics becomes evident uh, when we uh, when we do some uh, shortlisting of funds is because uh, you know it gives you a perspective on how and what level you are entering into a fund where where you are buying into a fund so i think it becomes important for any uh, investor or any analyst that uh, they should look at these parameters having said that if you have done a basic due diligence or what you are holding as top 5 stocks then stocks and top 5 sectors it give you a little impression about or uh, give you a little indication about how the funds are going to uh, behave as as you can uh, uh, you can uh, zero down on the various metrics of these top holdings also fair point okay so uh, the rolling returns piece is common between uh, both the gentlemen and i'm sure some of the other parameters also would be agreeable to both now what we will do is we'll try and ask both our guests as to based on the parameters that they have laid out what is it that has stood out i mean rushab was making a small mention to quant having done so well in the last two years but let's assume standard parameters involved out there and rushab good to have you back again so let's assume you've analyzed these rolling returns for the last 10 years or maybe since last 2004 what is the takeaway rushab what is what are the funds that stand out as consistent performers and is that outcome a means for somebody who's watching the show to invest into some of these funds as a decision making aneera uh, that's a great question and i also agree with sitish that you know along with a uh, rolling returns it's very important to look at you know the amc who the fund manager is what is their philosophy right what is their thought process how is their team and whether the whole process of what the amc is following is it matching with with your risk and your philosophy as well because we know that there are two styles uh, available in the market and fund managers follow which is which is growth and value and value can be very cyclical at times and underperforming on a on a seven year return basis as well so i think you know see from a data perspective uh, there have been four five funds which have done extremely well which is aditya birla flexi cap franklin india flexi cap kotak flexi cap parag parek has done phenomenally well uh dsp hdfc so these are the funds which have done really very really well you know in terms of delivering consistency right so i think in my view having a balanced approach you know while creating a portfolio uh, you know select different uh, funds uh, different of different amcs of different styles have a have a balanced approach between value and growth 
and don't have more than 25% exposure in a, in a hmm. particular fund i think because because what happens is that even there have been many funds which have been underperforming on on a 10 year return basis as well right. so you cannot you cannot avoid underperformance what you can do is you can select a quality fund right based on the past performance and based on the existing philosophy and the team of the amc but at the same time also diversify across across different styles and amc i Fine. think that would be a best way to minimize sure. uh, the underperformance risk sure rushab so based on all of this what are the funds that stand out uh, i think see there are five funds which i recommend to my clients uh, in the flexi cap category one is uh, parak parak flexi cap fund second is franklin india flexi cap fund third is the dsp flexi cap fund fourth is canara rebeco flexi cap fund and fifth is uti flexi cap fund so these are the five funds what i think i i really like and one can create an an equal proportion 20% each portfolio uh, you know in terms of lump sum as well as sip okay and viewers remember this would change depending on the nature of the investor that you are but because our guests don't have the idea of how tailor made specifications are for each there is a standard uh, piece being given rushab recommends these five as in as these five could be recommendations with equal allocation uh, not knowing anything else specific that might be there in your portfolio so me is starting the portfolio afresh assuming you had average age with average earning power and average investing power um shit is the same question to you based on the parameters that you've analyzed the 3 4 5 things that you spoke about including longevity etc what are the funds that stand out so uh, i'll just uh, put a caveat here that i'm i'm talking about fund which i like from a future perspective depending on what they've done in the past so we like uh, hcfc and uh, uh, we like franklin on the flexi cap side as i said and i i echo uh, rishab on the quant side uh, although the performance which we can analyze quant is for 10 years but yes last 3 4 years have been really good uh, sandeep has done a great job there with uh, uh, the flexi cap uh, fund also in fact the matrix which we just spoke uh, various valuation matrix uh, all these three funds are actually below their industry average as well as below the index which gives a very positive view uh, from the future perspective also so these are three funds which uh, we are looking at uh, which one can look at okay and shitish just one follow up there uh, what what are the average uh, returns that one can anticipate from investing in flexi cap funds with a let's say with a 5 year perspective so you can look at actually doubling your money in 5 and 1/2 years time 13 14% compounding is something which one can one can look at but you know uh, you actually enjoy uh, uh, the the power of compounding uh, as as eighth wonder if you give much more time to that sometimes you might see that uh, uh, returns coming much earlier sometimes it takes maybe half an hour year more but you know it becomes very really important that although we say that at least large cap and flexi cap once you look at five years time but you know equity investing is forever i always say that was uh, you can align your goals but if you really want to enjoy the benefit of equity look at two flexi cap funds last 25 years franken and hcfc uh uh nira has given 20 plus and plus compounding return which means you have doubled your money every 3 and 1/2 years so i'm saying for that but uh, you have to wait for 25 years to see that type of compounding happening their nav is more than 1000 by the way nira uh, that means there are these two funds are 100 baggers uh, we keep on talking about stocks which are 100 baggers we have mutual fund which are 100 baggers we have about 7 minutes left on the show so i think what we'll do is first try and get in couple of queries out of the way a uh, time permitting we'll try and take a topic on small caps or we'll probably talk about that next week as well a uh, small cap funds ain't going anywhere trust me okay let me first get the queries out of the way first uh, the first query is from santosh santosh kumar he's age 32 years um the goal that santosh has is to retire early santosh joined the gang now santosh is saying i want to retire by the time i'm 45 he has no mutual fund investments thus far and can invest up to 5000 rupees a month what funds can be recommended um shethis i'll start with you on this one i don't think he has a particular goal of an amount in mind all he has is a number that he can invest currently uh now can you can you maybe recommend something to santosh with regards to this so i will uh, recommend either the uh, first before sharing the fund name first he should have much more amount to invest in a uh, sip if he can't right now afford to have uh, much more allocation towards his investment then he should increase the retirement age because at 5000 if he grows his money at 13% also for the next 13 years because he is 32 he is planning to retire at 
he'll not have more than 42 lakh rupees as total corpus. Uh, subjected that, the money will grow at 13 percent. But if you increase uh, uh, this uh, this step up uh, offset to let's say or retirement goal to 55, he might have around three crore rupees. And as inflation is a big uh, monster here, I think 42 lakh rupees for any person right now uh, who's actually looking at investing or ret getting retired uh, early will be a very less amount at 45 years of age. So neither the problem right now with all of us, or let's say any investor who's investing into is not that how much money you'll make. Problem is that if you live long and chances for you living long is increasing day by day thanks to medication, healthcare and everything, then you have how you're going to sustain or survive uh, or let's say sustain your lifestyle the way uh, you have retired, you want to sustain at least that type of lifestyle. For that, you need uh, inflation beating assets that can be real estate or uh, uh, equity investing only. And uh, yeah, real estate is not liquid, but yes, equity investing is liquid. And then you can have asset to be going your way to maintain your lifestyle. So uh, uh, having said that, if you want to start with 5,000, I think the best way to do is he can have two sips. Uh, one is obviously we what we discussed, let's a fund. And he can have one large and mid cap uh, uh, fund on his side. Uh, he can choose any of the three funds which I spoke, and there's no recommendation. This is something which I like. And then on large, larger mid cap fund, uh, you have option from uh, Tata, which is good, Kotak, uh, which is good. So one can choose between them. So uh, that's what we like. So this is how he can start a portfolio. And if right now he can't step up, uh, at least on a yearly basis, he can do some step ups which can help him to get a better focus. Mm. Okay, I think valuable advice. Rushab, uh, come to you. I mean, would you advise, advise a step up as well and beyond the step up? Uh, uh, what else, uh, how, what kind of funds can uh, Santosh have in his portfolio? Uh, Neeraj, I more or less agree with Shitesh. You know, I think retirement early is not the solution because, you know, life expectancy is, is increasing day by day due to fantastic health care. And, you know, we, you know, a lot of people are living up to 85, 90 years now quite, quite comfortably. So I think 5,000 is, is not uh, going to be enough for an SIP do and step up of, you know, 10 to 20%, uh, you know, year on year. And, you know, out of whatever you're earning, say like if you're earning say 100 bucks per month, try to save and invest around 20 to 30 into equity mutual funds, because unfortunately we are not a pension friendly country, uh, especially in the private sector. So I think whatever we are going to save and invest is, is going to be very beneficial and fruitful towards the later part uh, of our lives when we are not working. So I think, you know, starting with a simple product like, you know, Nifty 500 index fund with a 5,000 rupees SIP would be great. You know, as and when, uh, you know, the SIP amount, uh, you know, as, as and when he increases the SIP amount, he can look at investing in flexi cap funds, mid cap funds, and even small cap funds. Because, you know, mid and small caps are equally important, you know, to to maximize in terms of returns potential over a long period of time. Hmm. Okay, fair advice, Santosh. I hope that helps. And now the second query is uh, from Krishnan. Krishnan is forty six years of age. Uh, the goal is well lump sum returns, and uh, Krishnan is saying that he's invested about ten lakh rupees in a Aditya Birla PSU fund in January two thousand twenty four. Now the returns from this fund have been fluctuating since Krishnan started investing. We'll, 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 we'll get this query on the normal uh, screen as well. Uh, but the returns from this fund apparently have been fluctuating since Krishnan started investing. Should he switch or, or to some other fund or should he stay invested? Rishabh, I'll start this with you. Uh, Neeraj, PSU is a sectorial fund. It's going to be very cyclical. Unfortunately, he's entered at a very wrong time. January 2024 was the peak uh, of the PSU sector in terms of price and returns. Uh, if he would have asked me this question, say probably two, three years back, then I would have said, you know, PSU is the right place to be in, uh, you know, because the valuations were uh, extremely reasonable at that point of time. Uh, to put it very simply, if he is in profits right now, uh, I would suggest him to switch from this fund towards a, a flexi cap fund because flexi caps would be more consistent over a longer period of time sectorial funds especially psu funds would require precise entry and exit in terms of uh, you know generating optimum returns so if you know he's in profits right now then switching to a flexi cap fund is something is is what i recommend but he if he's in losses then of course then just be patient, hold your horses, and just wait till the till the fund 
turns profitable and then switch because even if you hold the product you know from a long term perspective say like probably 5 7 years i think the returns are going to be little moderate and disappointing because he's entered at the peak of the price and valuation point you know so you know just just uh, be in flexi cap funds is something what i would suggest and if if he wants to take sectorial bets then of course entering at the right prices and valuations is something what i would suggest uh, and for that some bit of basic research around what the psc cycle etc might be would be very very important this will not be as easy an investment as a basic diversified one would be krishnan uh, but shitesh i don't know what your thoughts are on this very much in line with what bishop is saying uh, uh, yeah in fact i will like to add that if he can uh, if he can invest more then he can look at adding flexi cap or focus fund through stp rule over next uh, five to six weeks and if he have this much capital only then maybe if he has some losses also still i will recommend that 50% he should switch to flexi cap and 50% he should remain in uh, uh, your uh, psu funds only and yes uh, you have to time the market when it comes to your sectoral bets because you know the the funds the sector has already moved up really well and i'm sure it will do well but is yes, a single allocation that to lump sum allocation uh, uh, can be awarded going further in future for his future allocations okay point well noted gentlemen both of you thank you so much for taking the time out and being with us so i look forward to seeing you maybe next week or week after when we talk about the small cap end of the market as well something that we had planned or talking today but well queries plus flexi cap was a tall order thank you so much both of you thank you that's all that the time that we have on this edition of the mutual fund show stay tuned to ntv profit